Hello, Patreons. Good to see you again. Been a few weeks, maybe a month, since I did a video. Yeah, it's been a bit hectic. Videos take a little while. You know, there's all that cutting and pasting and things. And you can see I've got lovely Sunday morning hair. I'm not going to say that that's what stops me making videos sometimes, but you know, sometimes Sunday morning hair, it isn't good. Anyway, this week, I'm coming to you from my lovely new shiny, shiny iPhone. I finally upgraded. I've got a new iPhone XS and it's so excessive that I've called it the Vulgarian. So that amuses me every time it pops up on my eye thingies, you know, where it sort of sees all your objects in space and then it gives you their names. Anyway, amusing, handy, nice new cameras, I'm hoping. So this week, I finally got around, Katie, thank you for the suggestion and a few other people backed you up that they wanted another video on OmniFocus. So I thought with the release of the new OmniFocus software, this is a good time to go back in and revisit. So I've just given you a little tour of my categories and you know how I'm thinking about my um, tags and my projects. It'll make more sense when you see it on the screen. Please feel free to send me comments. I love your comments or, and I love your likes. Who doesn't love a like? But also feel free to send me your questions because that really helps me think about what video I want to make next. So in two weeks time, I'm going to actually be in the UK. So I have to think of something amazing and fabulous to do for a video there. And hopefully I can upload it and not have too many troubles. But anyway, stay tuned. If I have trouble with my video in two weeks, then you'll get something written. You'll get a care package in any case. So thank you as ever for subscribing. Thanks for all your help. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See ya. So here's the new OmniFocus in interface. When I first encountered it, I didn't think it was much of an improvement to be honest, but I'm actually, it's grown on me over time. So this is the inbox view that we're looking at. And this is where I send the email that I don't want to answer straight away, or that just might be useful for um, future reference. This is an example of a, an email that's useful for future reference. Here I've got the Society for Research in Higher Education email, which is happening in two weeks. I'm leaving next Friday. And they've sent us a handy dandy email and you can see all the details down here. There's a map and there's a few other things about how to get there and the timetables and so on. So I'm just gonna make a, I always make an adjustment to each one of these that come in. So I try and think of a verb that goes with the action that I wanna take. So just, I'll call this one just review. Review it when the time comes. Now, I have to turn it into a project or a tag. And first of all, I'm just going to show you my project and tag set up, and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do with that item. So projects and tags, just two different ways of looking at the items that you have on your to-do list. So here under projects, you can see that I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine projects at the moment. How did I decide on what projects to add there? I really just looked at what do I do every day. So I blog, so Thesis Whisperer is there. I teach. I've got this one called Networking Communication and Service, which is um, about just, it's a bit of a catch-all project about when I'm talking to people, um, when I'm um, helping out at the university with some things, when I'm helping out people who are not in my university. So anything that's kind of outwardly networking focused, I've put in there. I've got my job as Director of Research Training. There's a lot of admin and kind of strategic work that goes under that. I have a being Mrs. Mewburn, which is my other title, of course, as, as a wife and mother, and so that's the family. You know you know that I love you if I, if I have a context and a project around you, so that's my family. Um, doing excellent research. I put the excellent there just on Jason Downs' recommendation because it reminds you that you only want to do research that's excellent. So if there's something on there that's maybe less than excellent, is it really worth doing? I have something here called Get Stuff Published and I've separated out selling excellent research. That's our uh, commercialization activities, which I'll get to in a minute. And then I've just got Patreon, which is what I'm doing right now and future plans. And I have a recurring item here in the Patreon list, which is at the moment red, reminding me that I need to do a video every two weeks. So you can have these really handy recurring um, tasks. Um, you also have tags. So if projects are about what you do, you know, it's general sort of broad activity categories, if you like. 
I like to think of tags as just a different way of looking at the same information. And so it's a more granular level. So I actually have more tags than I have projects. Here's my tags at the moment. So I generated these tags mostly in a sort of a bottom-up method. So I generated them by um, just looking at my email and day by day, just noting down a category or a, or a bucket. Whenever I noticed that the thing's falling under the same sort of bucket, I just made a note of it. Sometimes I went through my inbox at the end of the week and just had a look and saw what ones I hadn't been able to categorize. And then I just sort of did a bottom up coding method. So I've come up with this um, tagging taxonomy and it just changes every now and then. But at the moment, it's proving to be quite useful. Postack is our commercialization project here. So there's quite a lot of items that sit under that. And so some items that sit here in Postack will either sit here in research or will sit here and get things published or will sit here in selling excellent research. So, but it, it all comes under one handle of Postack here. That's useful for me because we have a Postack meeting once every week. And so what I do is I just get this Postack view out and I see everything that relates to it. And that's handy. So if you have a meeting or a regular kind of committee or something like that, that might be a really good tag. And there might be various different types of work that fall under that one kind of category. I have a tag for people um, and these are key people. So Victoria, who works with me and my team, and Imelda, who's my line manager, Brendan, who's my son, Luke, my husband, and then just people in the family that I have to, to check up and keep things going for the rest of the family. Not very much, just a bit here and there. Under the blog, I've um, written extensively about how I use the blog um, on the focus to schedule the blog. But briefly, there's um, there's uh, a couple of different tags. So anything that's in production is um, is I'm still working on it. It's got to be scheduled. Um, anything that's under ideas, it just sometimes I just have an idea for a blog post and I just pop it in there. Other times, people send me things or. I respond to listener mail, if you like. So I end up sort of just writing an idea. Sometimes I get to these, sometimes I don't. And here's the scheduled blog post. I've only got three scheduled at the moment. That reminds me of what's coming up. So these are all ta sub tags under the blog tag. Next thing I have is student correspondence. It's when any one of my students sends me anything. So that will go under student correspondence. So an email from a student will appear there, but it will usually also appear under teaching. But sometimes I have correspondence from students that I'm not teaching. And in which case I just keep it under here and I might file it under network and communication. For instance, if it's a student who's um, uh, approached me from another university, it would sit under student correspondent uh, plus networking. Uh, if it's someone from inside my university, it's student correspondence plus, um, uh, plus teaching. I have a future focus category, which I just, when I have a big ideas usually, um, so WhisperCon that we run once a year sits under there. I've got in mind to write this ebook one day. I've got Patreon videos and so on. Uh, I've got life stuff, which is just general pay bills. Remember to do this, check your credit card, that kind of stuff. I find it really useful to keep it in here. It's the sort of stuff that I forget and get overdue bills and things like that. And that life stuff tag stops everything happening. This service work tab here, that's very helpful when I'm just keeping track of what I'm doing for other people. At the moment, I'm the co-convener, one of the co-conveners of our Ally network. So I have a lot of service work under there for Ally. I've got finance fees, paid work. That's where I keep track of my tax and so on. And this big bucket here, writing and presenting. This is very handy because it's got all the things that I need to do over the next couple of months in terms of actually producing stuff for other people. Got this little analysis tag here. Um, I've put it in recently. I'm not really sure if it's working for me, but sometimes it's just stuff that I'm ongoing looking at um, doing analysis work as I do my research. And so I've, I've put that tag in. And this sort of goes back to what's really great about Omni is that it's quite flexible. So you can adjust and change things if I decide I don't want that tag later on. I can just delete it. It doesn't delete the item. It just deletes the tag. Now, the key change with uh, with OmniFocus in this new version is that you can assign more than one tag uh, to each item. So each item only gets one project tag, but it can have a project, each item only goes into one project, but each item can get tagged with multiple tags. It took me a while to start 
really getting down with the multiple tag things, but now I actually find it quite useful. And I think it goes back to that thing where the when you file something, sometimes you're thinking about it in a certain way. For instance, I might file something like this in vivo training item, thinking about it in terms of my own needs for t further training around analysis. But I've also tagged it here with Victoria because she also needs that. So next time I'm talking to Victoria, I can remember that I've been talking to her about her needs for in vivo training. So that's how basically I organize all the tags and projects. I tend to not look at things in that way. I tend to look at everything through a forecast view. Welcome to my world about how overdue I am right now. Um, and I've just got so many things, multiple things on that are sort of piling into next week. It's a bit scary to even look at this. But so here's past due, what I should have done yesterday, probably. Here's what I have to do today. Here's what I have to do tomorrow. And the circles are actually tasks. And then these little square things are um, a meeting. So it shows you, it, it collapses both the calendar view and the actual task view. And so you can sort of see if you've got a lot of calendar meetings, which I have, then you probably want to have less tasks. And this lets you see at a glance um, if you're sort of uh, overclocking your day, so to speak. So just briefly, and I've showed you this before, but here in the inbox, if I come back to that item that I renamed with review, I can now assign it to a project. So this one is to do with Thesis Whisperer and teaching and networks. I mean, it's one of those ones where you think, where would I put it? I'm actually putting it under Get Stuff Published because conferences are getting your work out there. So I usually put conference under there. And then this is where the multiple tags really come into play. So um, this one falls into travel details because I want to look there. Sometimes I want to think, oh, where am I traveling to? That will be a handy reference. Sometimes it'll be under writing and presenting because I've got to get something done there. And then I always set everything a due date, uh, even if it's just to review that I should still have it in there. So in this case, I'm setting it for the day that the conference starts, which is the 5th. And so when I switch away from that view and switch back to it, it's disappeared. It's now in the system and I don't have to think any more about it. And that is really where Omni totally rocks my world because then I just concentrate on the overdue things I already have on my list. So that's a very quick tour of the new Omni. Happy to take any questions.